Hey everyone, my name is Lauren Price and I'm a networking specialist. And today I'm going to walk you through a demo of a new feature that we have out with Apogee and the use of PSC. But before we jump into the demo, I wanna walk you through a couple of slides so you can get an understanding of what PSC is, what Apogee is, how it's used, and the architecture patterns that we're working with today. So Private Service Connect is a new method of routing within Google Cloud that allows private consumption of services across VPC networks that belong to different projects or organizations. It can be used to access Google APIs and services or manage services in another VPC network. Customers using Apogee as their API gateway to secure their APIs can now make use of PSC to provide, to provide access patterns to and from the Apogee platform. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the whole process of setting that up. The Apogee runtime runs in a Google managed VPC that can be peered with a customer VPC. Traditionally, a network bridge provisioned along with a load balancer in the customer VPC was required to communicate with Apogee. But now you can use Private Service Connect or PSC, which we'll refer to it as, in the form of a PSC network endpoint group, or NEG, uh, to connect to Apogee in a northbound traffic pattern. Apogee is exposed outside of the Apogee tenant VPC through a service attachment. Uh, PSC NEGs are configured to point to these service attachments and API calls from the internet can be routed through the global HTTPS load balancer and the PSC NEG to Apogee. And when you have multiple Apogee instances in different regions, you can use the global external HTTPS load balancer and PSC NEGs to route traffic to the nearest Apogee region or seamlessly fail over from, from one region to another in the event of some kind of regional outage. As part of the demo, we'll walk through a number of components that have already been built ahead of time. So this is just a briefing of what those components are. The private service access peering range has already been allocated for Apogee on the default network. Um, KMS has already been set up in the appropriate regions that Apogee will be running in. We have already built the external HTTPS load balancer forwarding rule for port 443 protected by an SSL certificate. And lastly, we have test clients running in the US East one and US West one regions. One last detail that I wanted to touch on is we are using a commonly used open source domain called nip.io. We use that for a lot of our Apogee demos. Um, we're using that as our domain in this demo. Um, it's gonna act as a wildcard DNS for any IP address. And this is just because, um, this is so we don't have to purchase our own domain or, or own our own domain, um, just, just for demo purposes, like I said. So let's jump into the demo. All right, so here we are in the Apogee setup screen. This is the wizard that you will use to provision Apogee. This is what it will look like for first time users of Apogee. So if you've never provisioned Apogee before, um, this is what you'll see when you hit the landing page. So we're gonna go ahead and click set up Apogee and we will input the name of our project that we're using. And for this particular demo, we are using the pay as you go. If you do want to um, do any kind of test of Apogee, you can choose evaluation um, and that will give you a free evaluation org. Um, but for now, we're gonna use pay as you go. Um, so the APIs are already enabled in our project. We went and did that ahead of time. If you've not used Apogee before, these are all of the APIs that you will need to enable within the Google Cloud Console. So then we will go ahead and uh, click into edit for the Apogee organization and start to set that up. All right, so here we are in the edit screen for the Apogee org. Um, it's going to ask you to set up an analytics hosting region as well as a cloud KMS location and encryption key. So we'll go ahead and set up the analytics hosting region and then we will pick the appropriate encryption key region 
and we already have our pre-allocated, um, already created encryption key that we spoke about before. So we will go ahead and we will create the organization here and this will run for about five minutes. So we'll come back whenever this is done and move on with the demo. All right, so we are back. The Apogee organization setup is complete. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to set up the networking. Now for this demo, we are using the default network that exists within our project. And we have already gone ahead and set up this peering ahead of time, but this is the private service access peering range that we spoke about in the slides prior to the demo. Um, this is going to be a uh, IP block that you allocate for services that are using private service access. Um, even though we're using private service connect uh, for the access method, Apogee still requires you to set up a peering connection for the time being to be able to um, access services through Apogee, but just know that we're not actually going to leverage that peering connection. We're gonna use the private service connect NEG that we set up to, to actually access the Apogee uh, environment. So let's go ahead and connect that. And we will move on to setting up the Apogee runtime. Um, most likely you will pick the region that you picked for uh, the analytics when you set up the actual Apogee org. So we'll scroll, scroll down and uh, click US East 1, where we set up the analytics region. Now for the IP range allocation, that peering range or that you know private service access range that you allocated prior, um, we're just going to pick a smaller CIDR range out of that block to specifically allocate to Apogee. Um, if you pick automatic, uh, Apogee will pick a range for you out of, out of that block that you allocated, but if you want to actually pick your own custom range out of the block that you allocated, you can go ahead and click custom and put input your, um, your own choosing of an IP range. And last, we will uh, pick a KMS key to use as the disk encryption key. Um, again, we already created this, so we'll go ahead and we'll pick the key that we created in the US East one, re run one region and click Create Runtime. Now this step will take probably about 45 minutes to an hour. So again, we're gonna cut here and we will come back when this runtime has finished creating and we will finish out the rest of the wizard setup. All right, so we have finished our runtime setup and we are ready to finish out the wizard with setting up the environment and the access routing. So we'll go ahead and we will click edit for the environment and there are a number of specific names that you can choose here. Again, custom to your own environment. We're gonna leave the defaults in, so environment group name we'll keep as dev. Um, the environment group host name is essentially the domain of your Apogee instance. Um, and so this is where our nip.io domain is going to come into play. The host name that we put in here is going to be the IP address of our external load balancer .nip.io. And this is just gonna wildcard that domain um, so we don't have to purchase it uh, or purchase anything for the domain. Environment name, we'll keep the default. So lastly, we will scroll on down to node settings. This is what handles the auto scaling of Apogee. Um, for the purposes of the demo, we are going to keep scaling very, very small so we don't have to pay a ton. So for customers in production, this is probably not uh, an advised um, uh, scaling, you know, scaling settings for you. Um, but for demo purposes, this is great so that um, you're not you're not going to scale at all. Um, you're going to want to do some proper capacity planning um, to understand how many nodes that you'll probably want to scale up to. So we will create that um, and this will run for uh, a minute or two. So again, we'll cut and we'll come back. All right, lastly, we will set up access routing and this is specifically where you're going to pick whether or not Apogee is going to provision with that managed instance group that we spoke about during the slides or with PSC. 
Um, so specifically, you want to pick no internet access to use PSC and Apogee will create the services, service attachments needed for you um, to be able to connect to PSC NEGS. So we'll finish that out and your Apogee organization is ready to go. So let's go ahead and open the Apogee console and see what we're working with here. All right, so here you can see that we are in the Apogee console. Um, and what we're actually going to do now is we're going to go through the same setup process to set up another Apogee instance in the U.S. West region so we can show how the multi-region failover will work um, during the demo. So we'll click through a couple settings here um, and we'll get, we'll get that process kicked off to actually provision another Apogee instance. And there we go, we have it kicked off. Um, and again, we will let this run for a while. Um, we will cut and we will come back when this setup is done. Okay, so we are back and we have both regions set up complete. You can see that our service attachment URLs have been provided to us already because we picked the proper PSC setup. So we are going to now start the process of creating our NEGS on our backends for our load balancer. So I've made sure to copy down those service attachments that um, were in the Apogee portal, and we're gonna jump now over to the Google Cloud uh, console. So you can see we already have our load balancer set up. Um, you can see the IP address is the same as we put in for the domain. We have the cert here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit this. Um, and just to show you what we have going on here, you can see where our protocol is HTTPS. We have the IP address um, and we have the cert that we already set up ahead of time. So next we will go in to the backend configuration. And right now we already have an empty backend set up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit that so we can actually change the backend type to Private Service Connect Network Endpoint Group or NEG. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and add the East backend first, um, but we need to create it, right? So we're gonna name it. We're going to copy and paste that service URL that Apogee gave us and target that uh, for the service for the NEG. Our network, again, is the default network that we're using, and the subnet, we're just gonna go ahead and use that default subnet for the region that we're in. So that's our east region, and now we're gonna add our west region. So again, create that NEG. Um, we'll name this the west NEG. We will grab the URL that was provided to us from the west region, again, same network, uh, and we're gonna use the default subnet for the West region now. Uh, all these settings we're gonna leave blank for now. Um, again, in a production environment, would enable you, or would encourage you to enable logging, um, and also set up cloud armor to be able to protect those endpoints. Um, but for now, we're just gonna leave all those blank and we'll go ahead and we will update those backends. Uh, next, we will move on to routing rules and you'll see we're not doing anything special here. We're just gonna leave the default uh, for the URL map um, and just use the single default backend service. So we're gonna go ahead and update that and we will let it spin for a little bit. Again, take a couple minutes, so we'll cut and we'll come back and we will actually jump into showing you uh, what's next in the Apogee console piece. All right, so while that's spinning, while, while we're letting that spin, we're gonna jump back over into the Apogee console and we are going to set up an API proxy so that we can actually uh, show you um, what's going on with, with an API call. Um, so we have a, a simple proxy that we have set up already 
that um, is basically um, what it's going to do. It's going to it's going to point to um, httpbin.org, which is a, an API that will essentially take um, the call and return the headers for you. So we're gonna we're gonna point to that API. And what we're gonna do is we're actually, with this API proxy, we are adding a header to what httpbin.org is going to give us. Um, so we'll go here, we'll jump into the developer tab and we will show you um, that we are adding a specific header called region, and this is going to grab the region name that the Apigee instance is located in, and it's just going to return it in the form of the header. Um, we will point to some documentation down below that will um, show you something that's very, very similar to what this is. You'll just need to edit some of the specific parameters to get this set up. All right, so we're back in the Google Cloud console and we are actually going to test some calls now from our clients that we have created. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into Compute Engine and we are going to SSH both into the East one and the West one clients that we have created. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into these instances. So we're in our East one client. We'll go ahead and we will make that curl call to our API and you will see that the region that the API has returned is US East one. So now we will jump into our West one client and do the exact same API call and um, we'll see exactly that you get now that we're calling from the West because we're closer to our API or our Apigee in the West region that we will get a response from our Apigee region in the West. So now let's go ahead and let's take down one of those regions. So we'll jump back into the cloud console and we'll go back into our load balancer config and to simulate a, an outage, we are gonna go ahead back into our backend configuration. We're going to edit that again, and we are going to completely delete our West One backend. So this is just to simulate as if West One has broken or there is something wrong with the region. So we'll update our load balancer and we will let this spin and give it a minute. Um, to actually uh, update and recognize that the, the region is now down. All right, so we see that our load balancer is finished updated and we only have one backend neg on that load balancer. So we're gonna go back into East and we're gonna make that call again and you'll see that we're still getting a response from East. Our clients are supposed to get a response from East. Our East backend is still up. But if we go over into the West, where we should normally get a response from West, the expectation is now that those clients will have failed over to now use the Apigee uh, instances in the East um, because those West instances are no longer available. So we'll go ahead and we'll make that call. And you can see here right away that um, indeed our clients have failed over to now utilize the Apigee instance in the East because the West is no longer available. So operations are not interrupted at all um, and clients will seamlessly make that failover to point to the other region when their main region is down. So that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them below and we'll do our best to get back to you. I hope you can get a chance to try this out in your own environment and we hope to see you again soon.